I'm here with Kelly Sheffield and he will share a lot of gems with us about how you can use native advertising for straight sales. Hi Kelly. What are like the main takeaways? What should people look into if they want to use native for direct sales? Uh, well, you really want to make sure you have your fundamentals in place with native. It's a very difficult traffic source to work with. If you start too broadly and test so many offers, so many landers, you really make it difficult on yourself to find that, that winning combination. So you want to start small and focused and really try to focus on the offer first and foremost. That's, that's the thing that's going to make everything work. Okay. So how, how do I actually start there? So I'm, I'm more of like a, a paid social guy, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, I've tried native a bit, but you're definitely on a different uh, level here. Um, let's say I want to want to promote in a certain an offer in a certain vertical. Mm -hmm. choose, choose a vertical. Uh, skincare. Skincare, fantastic. So I want to push skincare offers, uh, and I'm not going for trials because uh, trials. Yeah, there's lots of issues with them, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not as long-term strategy. There's always issues with cap and quality and retention rate, especially on native. The, the quality of traffic isn't as good as, say, Facebook. Right. So you're going to run into uh, retention, rebuild issues with trials. And so, that has not uh, been easy or become more easy over the last couple of months. Right. I right? tried to move completely away from trials, yeah, just okay. straight sales. Okay. So you have you have your offer, or you have a couple of uh, straight sale offers that you want to test out. Um, and you're getting your uh, native ad accounts ready. Uh, how do you actually start? What's like your process of making that work? Well, your first point of contact should be talking to your, your account manager. Okay. And getting information on if, if anyone else is running this type of campaign, okay. um, what their targeting is like, what their campaign setup is like. That's extremely valuable information. Um, ideally, you want to start with a, a small like whitelist if they have one. If yeah. they can provide you one, great. If not, you can typically say start with a one category or a few uh, brand or premium sites. But you want to start with a small uh, subsection or like a microcosm of traffic. So it's getting representative of the whole without just blasting the entire network. So you want to make okay. sure you're not doing too much at once. Okay, all right, so say you have that and then you basically just push out uh, your first ads. Yep. Um, okay. So you want to start with about, about four or five ads on native typically depending on the platform. Any more than that, it's, it's kind of a wasted. And you really want to focus first and foremost on nailing down that offer first. Right. That's going to allow you to. You kind of want to build your 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 pillars, or so to speak, of your of your house, your temple. You know. Right. Right. Make sure everything's in order before you're trying to do too much at once. Of course. All right. Makes a lot of sense. So, what do you think are like the main challenges that people will face? I mean, native is definitely it's a big part mindset. Um, okay. There's a lot of traffic you can buy, and a lot of traffic to sort through. And I think people sometimes just kind of hope and pray, they kind of throw money at something and and they get some widgets or placements that work and so they, they cut to just those. Yeah. And then the next day they run it, it's like, oh, this one's not working as well, so they, they cut that one. And you keep going down this route, like in increasingly smaller campaigns and you get to the point like, well, what happened here? Was, was the offer bad or was I making uh, mistakes with my data analysis? And a lot of times if, if the offer is not working broadly across many widgets and it's only working like on a few, um, it's, it's not going to work at, at scale. It's probably not a good enough offer. So you want to make sure something's working on a broad range of widgets, not just like picking and choosing widgets here and there. You okay. want to look at like the ecosystem as a whole, like that your traffic you're running on is representative of, of, of the whole if you want to really scale to big numbers. Right. So, do you, How much do you actually use spy tools and how much do you come up with your own angles? I, and, I practically and hardly ever use spy tools. Okay. Uh, the account uh, manager, your, your account rep is so much more valuable in terms of telling you what's being run. And of course, I'll look around just to see what the campaign and offer is, but I'm not going out and thinking, okay, this is the you know, golden egg, I'm going to take this and run right, with it. Right. Because a lot of times, what you, just because you see something doesn't mean they're, they're making it work or at scale. Or it, may, it may be yeah. running at this level and you can run it at a much higher level. So like, I don't look at like a lander and say, oh, this is an amazing lander. I think, okay, well, they're, they're making it work. Yeah. I can probably make a better lander and better ads. So, okay, and it's very interesting that you put so much confidence actually in your in your rap. Um, yeah. So you you actually do get that information uh, straight from the traffic source, or also from from the network, or uh, with native, uh, it's it's mostly from my my account manager. Yeah. Uh, my traffic my traffic rep. Okay. All right. That's very interesting. Okay. 
So that's, that's a good piece of advice, I think. Just hit up those people and uh, really build a relationship and, and see what information you can get from them. That could uh, save yeah. you a lot of money I mean, and make you a lot of money. I, I feel like a good account rep is like the most, one of the most important things in affiliate marketing. Like they'll really give you the keys to the castle or really um, help you find those winning campaigns for quicker. So Amazing. Okay, um, one more question. So, so obviously that relationship is a, is a key takeaway. Uh, thank you for that. Um, what are other like main points where you say, okay, somebody who's just uh, starting out, somebody who wants to try uh, out that funnel, mm, what do they have to look into? How do they get started? Uh, so there's a lot of great uh, nutraceutical type networks around. You can, you can hit them up. Uh, one thing I would say is you really want to work with um, networks that have a strong business development side and are really actively working on their offers. You don't want to just be picking an offer and running it. You want to try not to like go grocery shopping for offers in a yeah. sense. You want to make sure someone's running it and that, that ideally the, the team there is, is working with these advertisers to get them in line, to right. get them uh, competing for your traffic. Right. If they don't have that, you're really at a disadvantage. So especially with straight sales, where they are now in, in the uh, in the affiliate space, uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. So you ideally want to be that first mover. Um, so you want to work with networks that help you create those good offers and help advertisers match the payouts and everything like that. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you.